Hey guys, um, so this is going to be um, one of the first of quite a few videos I'm going to post um, throughout the course of the semester that are specifically targeted for a particular text or a particular time period. Um, so this one's going to be focused on um, Puritan literature or colonial literature. Um, I'm going to use those terms interchangeably for you guys. Um, so just kind of keep in mind, whichever one I say, I'm referring to the same period of time um, in these same two texts that we're going to be looking at in this um, general area. So um, as I'm going to be posting this um, here at the beginning of the week, um, you guys should have last week, um, as you guys were getting access to Google Classroom and whatnot, um, you should have seen and hopefully gotten through the annotations for um, the previous text I posted, which is entitled Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God, and it's a sermon by a, a guy named Jonathan Edwards. Um, and I'm hoping you guys are noticing a lot of really kind of out there stuff compared to what people would believe today, especially if you're Christian um, of any variety. Um, so I wanted to kind of go ahead and start just to kind of review the Puritan um, ideas, just to make sure that we're all clear on that, especially um, some of the notes I posted for um, the acronym TULIP. Um, then I'm going to talk a little bit about the two authors we are going to be or have been reading and then um, just kind of explain how these things are kind of fitting together in the whole concept of American literature, which is kind of where we're starting. Um, so to begin with, looking at TULIP. So um, normally today we see um, Christianity as something that's very forgiving, something that's really focused on um, doing good to get good in return, essentially. Um, and this is kind of very different from what um, we're seeing from the Puritans when we start American literature. Um, they, um, the Puritans kind of bounced around from place to place for quite a few years before they landed here in what is now America. Um, but do remember when they landed here, they were originally British and they were British until quite a few um, decades later, and we're going to start looking in the next time period when we start to become quote unquote America. Um, but these Puritans lived a really harsh life. It took them a very long time to get here to America after they were kind of, um, judged and persecuted and exiled from so many different places, including England and Holland. Um, they ended up here after months and months at sea, you know, it took them way longer than they had thought it was going to take them. They got here in the middle of winter. Um, they weren't even able to bury their dead. They were running low on supplies. Um, they lived on the ship even longer until people agreed to terms of a particular contract known as the Mayflower Compact, um, which you guys should have heard at some point at history or in history classes, um, but you also should have heard mention of it in the previous videos you watched last week. Um, so to specifically look at TULIP, so TULIP is kind of like their religion broken down into an acronym. It's the general idea of what they believed. It's not everything, but it's the primary, like, major notes. Um, so the T for TULIP stands for total depravity. Total depravity essentially was in reference to original sin, which of course is Adam and Eve. Um, and if you're not really sure about that, let me know. I'm sure everybody at this point has heard of Adam and Eve. If not, again, let me know and I can easily um, give you a little bit more explanation. But original sin, referring back to Adam and Eve, and essentially they thought everybody sucked. All humans didn't matter what kind. They were humans, therefore they sucked. They were part of Adam and Eve's bloodline um, and they were part of the problem. Um, and just hearing that is probably kind of very shocking in a way. Um, and I hope you noticed that when you were reading Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God, that definite um, aggressive tone, that idea that people are sinning and they're not doing right. Um, if you didn't notice that, we have bigger conversations to have as well. So let me know if you're struggling with that particularly. Um, and then the other four, a little bit... Um, you know, pick and choose in the text. But that first one is really easy to point out. Um, the second one we have is unconditional um, election. 
which is essentially saying that it's God's choice whether or not you are selected to go to heaven or not. And that's the whole idea behind this particular religion that you don't actually earn your way into heaven. Um, God essentially has chosen you or not, and that, that chosen group is called the elect. Um, so this unconditional election, it's already been predetermined since before you were born that you were going to heaven or not. Um, God has chosen to save you or not, which leads into the limited atonement. So limited atonement typically, um, is in reference to um, Jesus only dying for some people. He's only making up for the sins of the people who have already been chosen. So he's making up for the sins of the elect only. Um, so if you haven't been chosen, if you're not part of that group, you know, off you go. But, you know, uh, the limited atonement portion is kind of referencing that. Um, irresistible grace would be I, and that is basically talking about that idea that um, it's not something you can pick. It's all about God's will and God's power. Um, he has chosen you or not. You can't earn it. You can't deny it. Um, if you're going to heaven, you're going to heaven. If not, you're not. There's no changing that particular fact. Um, and finally, they have perseverance of the saints. Um, and perseverance of the saints is kind of... Everybody needs to do their own research and determine what things mean for them. So that always meant going back to the Bible, looking for guidance, making sure that they were doing what they interpreted as the right thing to do in every situation. So one thing about the Puritans is they were not really big on having fun. They didn't waste time. They didn't um, do a lot of extra stuff like we go to the movies, we listen to music, we enjoy um, hanging out with our friends. Puritans were not those kinds of people. They did very, very few things. Um, and basically that list includes working constantly, going to church constantly, um, sleeping when they had time, and finally, writing. Writing was one of the biggest ways that Puritans tried to figure out whether or not they were one of these elect, because they didn't already know for sure if they were one of these um, selected people that was going to go to heaven. So essentially, they would write, and they would constantly journal and write poetry and try to figure out if they were one of these selected people that was going to move forward into the afterlife in a positive way. Um, so Jonathan Edwards, um, in his sermon, is kind of re reminding people, hey, remember this is the goal, this is what we're trying to do, and you're not doing what you need to do. You're not holding up your end of the bargain, um, and you need to do better. On the other hand, when we start looking at Anne Bradstreet, you're going to see more of that questioning um, about whether or not she is one of the elect based on what's happening. She's trying to read and interpret and look for guidance to figure out if she is that person who's selected. Um, women were not actually frequently educated at this time in, you know, most of the world. Um, Puritans actually educated women because it was another person to read the Bible. Um, and... You kind of had to believe in religion at this time. There just wasn't an alternate option. You either did or that was it. Like, <laughs> you lied about it if you weren't religious. Um, everybody was religious at this time. And if you lived in a Puritan community, you were Puritan. If you lived in another community where the, uh, there was a different religion, you were that religion. There wasn't really mixing of religion at this time. Um, and if there was, it caused a lot of conflicts, which is why... You know, some of these groups got kicked out, like the Puritans got kicked out of England because they weren't officially Protestant, which is what England was at the time. Um, there is no separation of church and state. So this comes a little bit later in our history when we finally start separating those two entities um, to kind of make things run a little bit more smoothly. Um, with that being said, do you keep in mind that we still have a very Christian-based society, even if it's not official? Um, a lot of those remnants still exist, and one of the major religions in the U.S. is Christianity in various types. Um, and finally, just keep in mind that we are skipping over Native American literature, not that it's not important, 
but we're starting with the first thing that leads to America being America, which would be this colonization, this colonial literature um, taking place in America at this time, which if I'm not mistaken, it's the 1700s. I'm not good with numbers. Um, I can tell you things in relation to other things, but numbers aren't my thing. Um, so we're going to use this as our first um, period of uh, American literature and kind of like keep these things in mind as you go forward into the Anne Bradstreet um, poetry this week. And remember, you only have to pick one of the three. Um, they're similar, but each of them has their own little special something. Um, so keep in mind that you're not like picking an easier one or harder one necessarily. They're all pretty much on the same level. And though it is poetry, guys, I don't want you to be intimidated by it because it's super, super straightforward compared to other types of poetry we'll look at. This is going to be fairly straightforward. And if you're having any issues about annotating or anything like that, what I'm expecting, um, let me know sooner rather than later because I will constantly be asking you to do these particular strategies. Um, I'm, well, um, you know, always available for, you know, answering emails. I can do a video chat with you, anything you need. Um, just let me know. And if you're, you know, feeling overwhelmed about anything, also let me know because I'm here to help. Um, but I don't know if you don't tell me that you're struggling. So, all right, I guess that's it for now. Um, as I said before, let me know if you need anything. And um, let me know if any of this isn't quite clicking because I'd be happy to um, chat and give you a little bit more. All right, guys. Good luck on stuff this week and be ready to do a couple more things with this text. Um, all right, well, get reading with that Anne Bradstreet. I'll be here with uh, any answers to your questions. Have a good week, guys.